Tesla was targeted in a failed cyber attack, an Autodesk exploit was used in the wild, and bypassing pins on contactless Visa cards. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for September 1st, 2020. This year is going by so fast, but I feel like that's a good thing. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I have got a big announcement. Patreon just introduced annual memberships, so I immediately enabled that on the ThreatWire account. So you can now support ThreatWire annually or monthly. And for a limited time, annual supporters will get a 15% off discount Account, which amounts to just about two months of free access, and you will still get the same perks. Current patrons can also switch to take advantage of that discount. And now, on to the news. Tesla is at the center of a big cybersecurity story this week. Not because somebody found a flaw in their cars, but because they were a cyber attack target, but they thwarted the attack thanks to an employee who chose ethics over money. On Tuesday of last week, the Department of Justice arrested a Russian citizen named Igor Krushkov for conspiring to breach the network of a Nevada-based U.S. company. The FBI also filed a complaint against the same person for conspiracy to intentionally cause damage to a protected computer. Now, the U.S. government accused him of planning to plant malware on a company's network. And even though the DOJ did not name the company, the media was able to put two and two together and determine that it was Tesla that was targeted. It probably helped that Elon Musk replied to a tweet naming Tesla as the target, in which he said, quote, this was a serious attack. So obviously it was Tesla. According to Teslarati, an employee at Tesla's Nevada-based Gigafactory was contacted by Khrushchev via WhatsApp asking to meet in Sparks, Nevada. Now, notably, this employee could also speak Russian, so it's suspected that the attacker or their accomplices had done research to find and target specific individuals. Now, that employee did meet with Igor socially, and at some point in time, Igor introduced him to his plan to infiltrate the Tesla network with malware, which would create a DDoS attack while extracting confidential data and holding information ransom. The employee would be paid up to 1 million USD for his or her cooperation. Now, instead of choosing to partner up with the attacker, the employee reported this to Tesla and Tesla got the FBI involved. The employee kept conversing with Khrushchev under the FBI's request to gain more information about his plans. The employee eventually met him again while wearing a wire on August 19th. Khrushchev agreed to pay an advance payment of 11 grand to the employee, but two days after that, Khrushchev must have gotten spooked as he told the employee the plans were delayed. The FBI got in touch with the hacker and caught him in Los Angeles, where he appeared to be on the flee from the US. Now, Khrushchev could spend up to five years in jail if found guilty. Bitdefender's Cyber Threat Intelligence Lab released a report last week detailing evidence of an industrial espionage campaign using apt hackers for hire. According to the report, they were targeting an international architectural and video production company, but the company name was kept anonymous. The attackers were able to infiltrate the company using an infected plugin for Autodesk 3DS Max, software that is usually used for professional 3D computer graphics and animation, modeling, and more. Now, this is unique because these kind of groups of cyber criminals usually work on their own for financial gain. They are very rarely hired to attack specific targets through competition. Now, the researchers found the malicious payloads and command and control infrastructure for this attack were based in South Korea. Autodesk had published an advisory on the 10th regarding an exploit in the same software, which turned out to be the exploit that was used for this attack. Bitdefender reports that this plugin exploit includes a DLL file that can download additional binaries from the command and control server with the end goal of stealing documents. But that's not all. The malware can also capture screenshots and passwords from browsers, upload specific types of files, and collect data about the machine, all the while evading detection. While the report details a specific targeted attack, the researchers did find evidence of other similar attacks against other targets that use similar malware, all within the past month. 
Now, luckily, Autodesk has a patch, so Bitdefender recommends users update to version 2021-2015 SP1. Even though the target was not named, Bitdefender did explain that this was a real estate industry company and suggests that the attackers were hired by a competitor. Before we hit story number three, I want to say thank you, as I always do, to my supporters over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Check out these amazing new fur baby photos from my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons. They're awesome for sending them my way. I love your photos. Thank you so much for sending them in. Also, if you have not seen the action alerts that I have been posting on the page, I have been getting really great feedback from several of my patrons who said they actually use these alerts to harden their own network security or those of their business. So that's really awesome news. That's exactly why I am doing those action alerts. So thank you so much for the feedback to my patrons. And if you are looking for those, you can also search action alerts on the Patreon page to find all of the historical posts that I have posted. <laughs> thank you so much to my patrons and go over to patreon.com slash threatwire to see more. Since I used to work in payment processing, I always find these kind of stories pretty fascinating. So props to my patrons for choosing this week's top story about a new authentication bypass technique found in Visa contactless payments. Researchers over in Zurich, Switzerland at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology have found a way to bypass the PIN code needed to run a transaction through a contactless Visa card. According to their research, it's a security bug that would allow allow an attacker to use a contactless card to pay for products and make it look like they are a regular customer using their digital wallet on their smartphone. The cashier would not notice any kind of difference. Here's how it works. The attacker would need two different Android smartphones, an Android app that the researchers had developed, and a Visa contactless card likely stolen from a legitimate card holder. In this case, they used a modified version of Tamarin, which is a tool used to discover vulnerabilities in TLS 1.3 and 5G authentication. The attacker would install this application on the two phones and it would work as an emulator for both the card and the point of sale system. The point of sale emulator would be discreetly hidden close to the physical card and the card emulating phone would be the one used to check out and purchase products. Their application on the POS Android phone would request payment from the card and once receiving data, it would modify the transaction data to remove any need for a PIN and send that modified data over Wi-Fi to the card emulator phone, which would not require any PIN entered. They have successfully done this attack on Huawei and Pixel phones, and it does not require any extra privileges. The problem resides within Visa's contactless protocol and the EMV standard, which stands for Europay, MasterCard, and Visa, and is basically the protocol used for chipped cards. They found that the protocols do not authenticate the cardholder for verification, nor do they protect the data against modification with any kind of cryptographic signature. There's absolutely no signature there. Now, payment cards have several different fields of data that control how the transaction is processed. So if this data can be modified without verification, an attacker could run up a card, a real card, incredibly fast. In this case, the attack modifies the data to say that no PIN is required and the cardholder has already verified their data with the smartphone app. All of that happens on the phone made to be a point of sale emulator, then it's sent to the payment phone, and then it's sent to the legitimate point of sale. They also found an issue in older MasterCards when running an offline contactless transaction. Usually these would be cryptographically verified with the card issuer and the terminal, but they discovered that this did not happen correctly on the older cards. That means that once a merchant got online to clear the transaction with a bank, they would find that it would be declined. Both of these issues will be presented next year at the IEEE Symposium on Security and Privacy and the full report is linked down below. Now, before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Chris One, George R, John B, Sergeant Big Nose, David M, Idiot127001, that's the actual name there, Hang Dog, Paragon, Eric R, and Syntax Bearer, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you to each and every one of you. You are so awesome, and I truly appreciate you. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet except next week is Labor Day, so I'm taking that week off. So I will see you in about two weeks. Bye.